We're at the shop this morning getting packed up to go over to Kashka. We're doing a sharpening demo there, which is a service that we do for some of the local restaurants. Let's head over to Kashka. So I can tell that, you know, knife maintenance, knife skills are really important to you. I can also tell by the food here. And I'm looking at these knife cuts right now and I'm impressed. It says we just want to give people a little peek on the working chef and what tools they use and what their preferences are. I noticed that you're using carbon steel. Uh, do you have a preference for carbon steel or you just like that particular knife? It depends on what I'm doing. Um, it's, it feels really good and sharp, but it is uh, certainly much more brittle. And so it, they t require a little bit more care. This is like a show knife for me. The first year that we were open, we went to Knife House and got um, one year anniversary gifts for all of our staff that had been with us for the full year. That, yeah. And my husband was so awesome because he was like, you should buy yourself something. Yeah. So this is like my first fancy knife that I ever bought. It has a very special place. It feels like very personal to me because I like to choke up a lot and that little nook feels so good. It is a little harder to maintain so I don't necessarily use it day to day all the time for everything. Um, but you know it's certainly a flashy knife. People will always ask me about it. Yeah. It is really sharp. I mean yeah. it is amazingly sharp. And another thing I noticed is that you have a couple of unusual knives in your kit. Yeah. Uh, one is that little paring knife. Fortunately, it's not always in my kit because it's my mom's technically, but I brought it out because it has such sentimental value to me and when I go to her house to this day, I will pull it out and use it for stuff. These days, they use it more to like open jars. But it like came from mints. It was a gift actually from my uncle to them at one point, the first time they visited the Soviet Union after they had immigrated. So like it has significance to them, but like for me growing up, I didn't know any of that. I just thought like, I don't know, I just loved it. So anyway, like it just has this like great sentimental value and at the same time, it's still heavily used to this day in their home and when I go there, I use it. So it's just, I just love it. This was yeah. in the kit in culinary school. So nice, heavy, heavy knife. I imagine, so one of the best things about this knife probably is that every knife after it seems really light and makes you feel fast. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I hardly ever use it for its actual intended purpose anymore, but it's always in my drawer at home um, where I tend to do more like recipe development because you know downstairs in our kitchen here, there's always a lot going on. So when I'm at home figuring things out, I will want to make sure that my knife cuts are, like when I say, you know, I want this a quarter inch, I'm like, well, is it actually a quarter inch or am I forgetting? And so I will pull this out and use it as my ruler all the time. It also has my initials on it, which, you know, just in case it ever gets, I mean, in culinary schools, everyone had the same exact knife. So like you could tape them, but a lot of people did this so they could tell. That's, yeah, that's way better than tape. That's actually yeah. one of my pet peeves is when I see knives with, uh, yeah. with uh, tape on the handle still. So it has my maiden yeah. last name. So it has this like, sort yeah. of like, again, historical reference yeah. for me. And yeah, that ruler, man, I still use <laughs> I have, I remember I like melted it, so, right. you know, whatever. It's That's perfect, yeah, that's the way it should be, yeah. Knives are like people, like blemishes are like part of your story, and so like I love, I love that sort of stuff. No, it's great. People are always surprised by some of the knives I use, and it just, it's, uh, they don't always have to be the highest grade knives or, or the best looking knives. It's just a matter of what you're attached to that has a huge significance yeah. versus, you know, actual function. But the chef knife is generally the most used knife in the kitchen and that's I know that's everybody's kind of do everything knife. Is there any kind of specialty knives, anything that you can't do without? The salmon slicer that I have is such a very specialized tool. When I don't have it around, it's probably the one I notice most that I'm missing, you know, like more so than a serrated knife or a boning knife or any of those other things like this one. Because it's so skinny, so you have less like um, resistance, right, going through. Yes. Um, and also the ground, hollow ground, helping it go through smoothly. And so you can get like a really nice, beautiful, thin cut on like a side of salmon. We, we have cured salmon on the menu all the time. Well, thanks again for taking the time to do this with us. I know you guys are busy and oh this was God. even in the middle My of service that you did this with us. All right, but thanks again, yeah. Chef. I really appreciate Thank it. You.